So let's talk about Caitlin Collins, uh, the the wonderful young CNN correspondent who uh, did a not so great job with Donald Trump tonight. Let's talk about her. Well, liberals are very upset with her, understandably so. She kind of flub. She kind of flubbed it. She kind of fucked the bag up. Okay, hold on. Ah. Ugh. It was more so, in my opinion, CNN's fault. But it was more so CNN's fault, or rather, this was done deliberately. However, part of the reason why she was put up for that position is because of this. Because she's got bona fides. Motherfucker went to England just to sit in a room with a gig. <coughs> I don't know if you know this, but there are plenty of things I'm doing. When I'm not live. So. Like I, I've been, you know, I've been running around. Roaming the streets. Anyway. Shocked that someone who got her start raiding the hotness of Syrian refugees for Tucker Carlson. And who's never hosted an event like this. Is unable to control a notorious firehouse of lies and misinformation in front of an audience of hundreds of supporters. Sawyer Hackett said, I'm sorry, but this is an embarrassment, and it's probably not Collins' fault. Trump is a fire hose of misinformation and distraction. They filled the room with supporters. He just got a standing ovation for pardoning all January 6th insurrectionists. This is a complete mess. Um, for the record, this is what she wrote. 13 Syrian refugees we take immediately from Caitlin Collins. She wrote, the ice bucket challenge hipsters, these Guantanamo detainees did it first. The internet wonders, are the Obama girls' skirts too short? And numerous other wonderful stories like this. However, the Daily Collar is even worse than the Daily Wire, by the way. It's Tucker Carlson's shop. Turns out, back in July 15, 2021... She scrubbed the internet of a lot of these articles that she had written. Turns out she's not so fond of these articles that she had written for the Daily Caller, Tucker Carlson's shop. There's something strange going on with the bylines of CNN star White House reporter Caitlin Collins tied to stories she wrote as an entertainment reporter for the Daily Caller, the right-wing website co-founded by Tucker Carlson, where Collins cut her reporter teeth. At least five of Collins' Daily Caller bylines tied to potentially embarrassing clickbait stories appear to have been erased, where her name used to be. Is it too loud? Am I getting too loud? Here, I'll lower it a little bit. What about now? Is that better now? I think it's better now, probably. I lowered the audio a little bit. But I want to get close i want to get up close and personal with you i want you to be able to hear everything i'm saying i want you to be able to hear my thoughts there you go <laughs> anyway At least five of Collins' Daily Caller bylines tied to potentially embarrassing clickbait stories appear to have been erased. Where her name used to be is now the word contributor. But a quick check on the Internet Archive known as the Wayback Machine shows Collins' bylines still affixed on the top of those stories, including an April 6, 2015 article that headlined, The Internet Wonders, Are the Obama Girls' Skirts Too Short? At the time, President Barack Obama's daughters, Malia and Sasha, were 16 and 13, respectively. Also missing a byline is a November 18, 2015 pictorial titled, 13 Syrian Refugees We Take Immediately. The story explains it's because they are seriously hot. 
Photos of the supposedly hot refugees are no longer attached to the story or cached on the Wayback Machine because they were Instagram photos. But the Wayback Machine clearly shows Collins' byline attached to the story. One of the most cringeworthy stories was Ice Bucket Challenge hipsters. These Guantanamo detainees did it first, published on August 18th, 2014. It likens the then viral Ice Bucket Challenge, where people threw freezing cold water on their heads to raise money for hairless to waterboarding. What follows is a list of Guantanamo Bay detainees who got their due. Here are some more. Nine stunning photos of Melania Trump on Donald Trump's birthday. Slideshow. DIY. How to glare like Michelle Obama. The first lady is known for her unwavering death stare, and its icy intensity will surely go down in history. The look could make Tex Watson shudder, and at times makes us wonder if the president needs secret service from his own wife. Collins' byline also appears to have vanished from a pictorial posted on June 14, 2016, titled Stunning Photos of Melania Trump on Donald Trump's Birthday. Her name is also gone from DIY, How to Glare Like Michelle Obama, posted on October 22, 2014. Reached via Twitter and asked about the disparaging bylines, Collins responded, I am sorry, but I have no idea. I haven't worked there in over four years. Best to ask DC, the Daily Caller. Indeed, the byline switcheroo would seemingly have to have been done by someone inside the Daily Caller whose phone message instructs Patriots to press 1 to leave a message. That's awesome. You call, it, you call the Daily Wire and they said, Patriots, press 1 to leave a message. Calls to the Daily Caller co-founder Neil Patel, who reportedly bought out Carlson's stake in 2020, and to the site's current editor-in-chief, Jeff Ingersoff, were not returned at the time of writing. Does the Daily Caller even have articles anymore do they write articles still what is this and what does here's caitlin collins outlining how george soros is behind the great resp replacement ther uh, theory it's about to say therapy and also here's the biden war room bringing it up she's getting attacked on both fronts by the way She's getting attacked by end wokeness, and she's getting attacked by the Biden war room. That's crazy. She's getting her fucking shit pushed in. Respectfully. The New York Post, John Levine, who brought the disappearing guidelines to my attention, thinks Collins might like the stories that disappear because they don't suit her current image. Caitlin L. Collins has been a fixture at the network since she joined in 2017, he said. She's not popular in Trump land, where she was viewed as a standard hectoring partisan CNN journal. Few today remember that she got her start at the Daily Caller as an entertainment columnist doing a lot of low-rent clickbait. Collins was famously banned from the White House briefing room in 2018 for shouting a question at President Donald Trump that he deemed inappropriate. Conservative pundits quickly jumped to her defense, however, and she was reinstated. She is, I wonder why conservative pundits jumped to her defense. Maybe because she got her licks in originally in the conservative ecosystem. She also has managed to rankle Trump's successor, Joe Biden, including by shouting a question at him last month about his recent meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Biden later apologized for his where the hell response, saying, I shouldn't have been such a wise guy. Collins' byline was not deleted across the Daily Caller site and is still visible on many other stories she wrote. The site lists over 2,900 mentions, but they also include links to stories she has done for CNN. By 2017, she had graduated to White House correspondent for the Daily Caller, covering the Trump White House, and was quickly snapped up by Jeff Zucker's crew at CNN. Jeff Zucker's crew picked her up from the Daily Caller in 2017. This is why I fucking hate the media because they are not genuinely uh ideological warriors they do not fight ideological battles on issues that they clearly care about they are just mercenaries this is why i hate the white house correspondence dinner this is why i hate the media in general this is why i hate dc in general they just have a script and they go for it that's it CNN, when asked if it pushed to, her, to have her byline removed, denied any knowledge of it. Do you honestly believe, A, CNN would ask for this, or B, Daily Caller would happily oblige if I did, spokesman Matt Dornick said. Wish I had that kind of influence, but sadly, no. Sounds like a question for Daily Caller.
Wasn't she backed by both liberal and conservative journalists? Saying that she was only backed by conservative journalists because she did conservative clickbait journalism years ago seems like a bit of a stretch. First of all, she left the conservative side and went to CNN in 2017. She got uh, kicked out of the, uh, the, the, the White House in, I think, like a year after that. So it was fresh uh, by uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, she got kicked out of the White House press briefing room in 2018, one year after she had left the Daily Caller. And if you think Donald Trump gives a shit when CNN says, hey, you can't actually uh, kick our correspondent out, you're so stupid. The reason why it's important that conservatives backed her in that regard is because that's how you get results. That's why she was reinstated. Because conservatives uh, backed her when Donald Trump kicked her out. And why conservatives backed her at the time is pretty obvious because she was one year out from Daily Caller. That's it. Twenty nine minutes until uh, until New Zelda baby game. For the record, so there it is. Here is that very same person back when she was working at the Daily Caller, Tucker Carlson's joint, talking to Fox News about the Great Replacement theory do with the immigration crisis. Good morning. Okay, so George Soros is this foreign-born left-wing guy who essentially wants to change the nature of our country. And in this data dump, one of the memos was about the refugee crisis. And they made three points. They think that they've been successful at influencing immigration policy across the world. They think that the refugee crisis is an opportunity to continue doing so. And they think the refugee crisis is the new normal. And George Soros is this guy who is a staunch advocate for open borders. He wants people to be able to go wherever they want, whenever they want, for whatever reason. And for him, he sees this immigration policy, this crisis, as a vehicle to further his immigration agenda. Do with the immigration. Huh. The economy. Interesting. How did she get rehabilitated by CNN so successfully? How is this the first time I'm learning about all this insane background? She's been presented as one of the neutral figureheads at CNN, but this is unhinged. Um, it's because she popped off. I mean, she's obviously a very talented uh, pundit. Like, not a talented pundit, but like a talented anchor woman. So they recognize that early on because Jeff Zucker is a demon. And they picked her up, and it's pretty easy to scrub her shit from Daily Caller because no one fucking reads Daily Caller. That's it. They thought they could change her a little? No. They hired her for that reason. Don't be stupid, guys. These th these people do this kind of shit on purpose, okay? She got to that position because uh, she was saying that stuff. Okay? Make no mistake. She got there because she was writing for the Daily Caller. That's why she was elevated to that degree. She was talented. And she wrote for the Daily Caller, and CNN was like, oh, this is great. Jeff Zucker might have just thought, oh, she's charismatic, she's attractive, she's young, she's a, you know, she's a firebrand, we want her on our side. But ultimately, the reason why she kept getting elevated inside of the ranks of CNN is because she's all of those things, and she has Republican bona fides. Okay. Damn, you bought a new house, fake socialist? Yeah, exactly. I did. <laughs> 